Thanks very much, David. Sure appreciate it and uh, really glad to be here. As you might expect an independent to do, what I'm going to be doing is drilling down on a couple of specific examples of how conventional plays actually can turn into unconventional plays. And it just so happens we've got a, a short amount of experience when it comes to shell plays, but very prolific experience when it comes to the two plays in the United States that today have the highest rig count. And that's going to be the Eagleford Shell, where there's something in the neighborhood of 200 rigs running, and in the Permian Basin, where there are over 500 rigs running. The Eagleford Shell is a, is a prime example of how conventional turns into unconventional. There are many, many years that many companies were chasing that South Texas trend, pursuing the Edwards Reef play, Cretaceous Reef bumps. And as a company, Pioneer did that extensively. And every time we drilled an Edwards well, we were drilling through the Eagleford Shale. And many times we were drilling through the Eagleford Shale, we had flares and obviously gas shows. So we were one of the first companies who knew the Eagleford Shale was there, but you had to pretty much shift your thinking to be able to go target Eagleford Shale, which we did starting to drill vertical wells in 2006. Uh, at that time, the thought became these wells looked somewhat uh, poor and, and not very prolific. And so we really need to be rethinking the game. We started drilling horizontal wells at the same time that Petrohawk did, and the play took off from there. So this is an example of a situation where you had a conventional play. It was sitting underneath the Eagleford Shale. It also allowed us to have a tremendous amount of data because of the fact that we drilled through the Eagleford Shale so many times, and that Edwards trend play needed 3D seismic. So what happened is, a tremendous transformation of the use of technology in a new play, and in rapid fire, we're able to take that asset to very high rates of production. Well, this is just one example in our company because we have a very prolific play which we're developing right now uh, in, in the Permian Basin that is related to the Wolf Camp horizontal play. And I've got this map up here simply to show you what the area we're talking about specifically and it's shown here in the red rectangle north to south, commonly known as the Midland Basin. And this play is taking off and can be extremely impactful going into the future. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history then and what made this play become what it is. You're not going to be able to see this very well from the back of the room, but suffice it to say, this is a, a log of the many, many, many pays in the Permian Basin. And some history uh, comes to bear here. The Sprayberry Trend Area, which sits in the heart of the Midland Basin, was discovered in the late 40s. And at that time, uh, this is along the lines of one of Mark's comments, it was thought to be the largest uneconomic U.S. oil field because it was such tight rock. And accordingly, uh, it was going to take higher oil prices than the then current, you know, less than $10 per barrel economics to make this play work. That isn't to say the resource wasn't there but it was going to take a step change in technology and price to make this happen. So what happened? The drilling in the conventional sense headed off towards what I would refer to as extremely low-tech uh, manufacturing process. And here I mean using 1,000 you know, horsepower mechanical rigs, drilled the wells as fast and as cheap as you could do it. And in this case, you really didn't need any technology. You needed drilling engineers, but you didn't need geologists. You didn't need reservoir engineering. You needed no subsurface engineering because it had to do with just carpet bomb drilling as fast as you could. So roll the clock forward. And you, you look at the number of pays that we were, we were bypassing. It's sort of shocking in the sense that the traditional way those wells were drilled in the past were completed in the upper spray barrier, the lower spray barrier, the Dean, and that was pretty much it, because that was cheap drilling, and that was going to provide for the best economics in that economic world. Since then, we found, by applying very detailed petrophysics analysis to the recent campaigns in the late part of the last decade, they were actually bypassing pays in more silty shale zones. So actually, we've tremendously increased the number of completions in the wells, but also deepening the wells into the Wolf Camp. We just started that in about 2008 and then further into the Strawn, the Atoka, and the Mississippian. So the result of all that campaign of drilling through many, many years is we have thousands of wells with data. And so we, we look at this new play, that is the burgeoning Wolf Camp horizontal shale play, with a tremendous data set. So this 
Reminds me then of the Eagleford situation where we, by, by virtue of prior drilling, had acquired a tremendous amount of data. So we have about 9,000 digital logs that allow us to put a significant amount of structural control on this plate. Uh, 3D seismic is important. We have a huge database of 3D simply because you don't want to be drilling into fractured zones. And then finally, matching up core uh, in the sense of 4,000 feet or so we have uh, with the petrophysics allows us to accurately predict the kind of oil in place figures we're looking at here. And in this play, it's sort of a shocking number. It's something like 50 to 100 million barrels of oil per section in place. That's a phenomenal target. Uh, when, you when you consider the fact this Wolf Camp shell in a lot of the areas is about 2,000 feet thick, you have a substantial resource potential here. So really we have a brave new world when it comes to the Permian Basin is what it amounts to. This map shows uh, our acreage position to give you an idea and a point of reference. The southern oval area is where we're doing some of our drilling today. It's where the play began. We're doing our drilling there principally because it's an area we'd otherwise would be having uh, expiring acreage. It's also the area we are trying to seek a joint venture partner to accelerate the drilling campaign. But as we speak, we're also marching north. Our first wells will be going down in Midland County and then followed by that, some wells in Martin County and, and perhaps into Gaines County. So the idea is to march forward and prove up that this play works ubiquitously across our entire 850,000 acres. So the resource potential is absolutely phenomenal as a result of that. There is an important development going on too because we have to get out of our paradigm in terms of how these fields get developed. And this is an important development that we've made inroads in, inroads in with the Railroad Commission of the state of Texas and that is thinking outside of the box on new uh, drilling units. You can see here graphically a 960 acre development block that's configured north and south. And the reason this is important is because we want to drill a minimum of 7,000 foot laterals. What you see here is actually two sets, seven sets of two stack laterals. That's depicted in the lines up and down. So this is stack wells, perhaps one in the Wolf Camp A zone, one in the B zone, on top of each other. As long as they're within 300 feet in plan view, which is how you're looking at it here, each of those two pairs of wells uh, each of those pairs of wells only count as one location. So you're seeing seven total locations there. In a 960-acre block with 20-acre spacing rules, that means we could drill also 41 vertical wells. So you're looking at a scenario here, we could drill 14 horizontal wells and 41 vertical wells in a section and a half. Incidentally, that would cost about $180 million just to develop that properly. Uh, and in addition to which, it's probably at about 15 million BOE recovery. So the economics are really outstanding. And the reason you can still drill these vertical wells is we, we know definitively from all the wells we've drilled, they in the, in the wolf camp will only drain two to three acres around the well bore. So this is a phenomenal development and it's, it's clearly a very significant game changer for the Permian Basin. Uh, and you're really looking at the need here to spend hundreds of billions of dollars probably when the smoke clears in terms of how this it would eventually be developed if this is the direction that we go with stacked horizontals. Eventually, we probably would head more towards dual, dual or you know, three laterals or four perhaps even stacked. So it, it's a situation that's going to be developing. The technology that is developed in this room to make this happen is really critical. This is just one example in the industry where this, this play can make ver a very significant difference. So as an example, this is the kind of difference it makes for our company where we had in 2010, if you, I was here talking that day, I'd say we had about 1 billion BOE of resource potential. And now that increases to about 5.6 billion BOE of resource potential. And the real important point there is this is basically proved because of all the well control we have that I mentioned earlier, there really is not much technical risk here whatsoever. It really has to do more with the economics of uh, oil pricing this, we are 100% in the oil window here, so we don't have a lot of issues pertaining to gas or NGL prices. And then it has to do with, with costs. And so we are, we, in this case, can develop the concept of being in the oil and gas mining business, if you will. It's, we're drilling the wells, but we're essentially mining or manufacturing oil and gas. So I'm gonna stop there. I'll, I'll just give you just a hint. And, and that is, I think we're in a situation, to use a baseball metaphor, where we have our toes in the on-deck circle, not even 
The game hasn't even started yet. We might, in fact, still be in the, in the batting cages waiting for the game to start when it comes to this play. Thanks very much.